Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, uh, bringing you another exciting episode of Let George Do It, where the episodes are not too exciting to start out with, um, as they're still kind of struggling with perhaps maybe trying to do this as a sitcom. Uh, thankfully, that's not the prevailing settlement, but we, we, we're still in those first few episodes. Um, but we're going to get into uh, today's episode in just a moment. I do want to let you know briefly about our contact information. Check out the show notes site, greatdetectives.net. Uh, got any comments, feel free to email me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Please cast your vote for the show on Podcast Alley. Uh, But without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into Let George Do It. Your neighborhood Chevron gas station invites you to Let George Do It, brought to you by the makers of climate-tailored Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Compounded Motor Oil. George do it. That's the slogan George Valentine hung in his office when he got out of the army with an idea and not much money to back it up. When a client shows up with a problem, George is happy. When no client appears, George is still happy. The worry department is handled by his secretary, Claire, and her brother, Sonny. Right now, George is sitting in his office when suddenly he hears a commotion outside. Claire. Hey, Claire, come in here. What's the matter, Mr. Valentine? Oh, what's all that noise about? Well, there's a crowd outside our office building. Really? Oh, I wonder what's wrong. No, it must be some celebrity. Yeah, there. They're getting autographed. Golly, look at the mob. Well, it must be someone very famous. Maybe it's the president. Or Donald Duck. I'm going downstairs to see. No, Claire, you stay here. That mob will tear you to pieces. I got it. I got his autograph. Sonny. Sonny, look at your shirt. It's in shreds. Oh, what's a little thing like a shirt? I got his autograph. Look, see? Jimmy Jones. Jimmy Jones. Jimmy Jones? Jeepers, don't you even know who he is? <laughs> Wait a minute, don't tell me. Let me guess. I know, he's a fullback for Notre Dame. A player named Jones on the Notre Dame squad? <laughs> oh, now I know, of course. Jimmy Jones, he's an actor. He plays in cowboy pictures. He's not just an actor, he's a hero. Mr. Valentine, you know Thunderbolt, don't you? <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever had the pleasure. Oh, Thunderbolt's as famous as Jimmy Jones. It's his horse. Did you get his autograph, too? Well, the crowd's practically gone. Yeah, now maybe we can get a little work done in this office. That is, uh, if you feel up to it, Sonny. Uh, I beg your pardon, but I'm looking for George Valentine. Well, you found him. Come right on in. Thanks. You're Mr. Valentine. That's right. Say, haven't we met before? Your face looks awfully familiar. You know, I was just going to say the same thing to you. Your face looks awfully familiar, too. Mr. Valentine, it's Jimmy Jones. You've seen him in the movie. Oh, well, sure, of course. Sonny, is this your hero? Sonny. Sonny. She's petrified. Jimmy Jones. Standing right in front of me. (laughs) He's one of your many fans, Mr. Jones. Well, that's awfully nice of you, Sonny. May I shake your hand? My my hand? (laughs) This is your hand, Sonny. Come on, put it out. Glad to know you, Sonny. I'll never wash it again. <laughs> and this is Sonny's sister, my secretary, Claire Brooks. How are you, Miss Briggs? Uh-uh, don't shake her hand. Look what it did to Sonny. Oh. <laughs> uh, Mr. Valentine, I've heard about you, and I'm hoping that maybe you can help me. Well, I've never failed anyone yet. Uh, sit down, Mr. Jones. I wish you'd call me Jimmy. Okay, Jimmy. I hope Claire and Sonny won't mind, but <laughs> this matter's a little confidential. It's nothing I'm ashamed of, understand, but... I've got to keep it quiet for business reasons. Well, you can trust us, Jimmy. Oh, you've nothing to worry about on that score, Mr. Jones. We won't say a word. I'd die first. (laughs) Hey, you see, die first. Now go right ahead. Well, the trouble is the kids like me. Maybe they like me because I like them. I'm crazy about kids, George, and I'd never want to disappoint them. I just can't let them down. Well, of course not. Why would you let them down? Maybe you've heard. I, I was raised in an orphanage, the Brookdale Orphanage. And every year, Thunderbolt and I put on a benefit performance for them. Naturally, they expect me to be there this year, too. Naturally. And they'll expect to see me riding my horse, Thunderbolt. Naturally. George, Claire, Sonny, 
You mustn't breathe a word of this to anyone. You, you disappoint kids all over the world. Cross my heart. We promise. Well, go ahead, Jimmy. What's the matter? Well, I'm afraid of horses. <laughs> You're what? Oh, you cat things. Suffering cat. You see, we were shooting a picture and something frightened Thunderbolt. He shied and stumbled. He threw you? That's right, and then he stepped on me. Oh, how awful. Oh, it was an accident. Thunderbolt didn't mean to hurt me, but I was laid up for a long time. After that, I, I just couldn't get up enough nerve to ride him. Well, for that matter, to ride any horse. Yeah, but, Jimmy... I know it sounds silly, George. I keep telling myself that, but it doesn't do any good. Oh, sure, sure, I understand. But what about your career? Well, since the accident, they have a double who does the riding for me. Oh, I see. If this came out, you'd be through in pictures. Oh, that's not important. Think of the kids. Why, if they found out, they wouldn't believe in anything anymore. Well, that settles it, Jimmy. You can't make a personal appearance at the Brookdale Orphanage this year. You can't take the chance. But, George, those kids are looking forward to it. Your trouble is that you're too sentimental about kids. Now, you have nothing more to worry about, Jimmy. I'm in complete charge. I was hoping you'd say that. I'll tell them you had a nervous breakdown or something. You can send Thunderbolt with one of his trainers. Oh, but they want to see me ride him. The kids will never forgive me. Now, you leave that to me, will you, Jimmy? I'll take care of them. I know just how to handle kids. Mrs. Martin is the superintendent of the orphanage. She's in the play yard with the children now, but I'll get her for you, Mr. Valentine. Oh, thanks, miss. Uh, just tell her it's about Jimmy Jones. I'm sort of... Taking charge of things for us. Oh, you know Jimmy Jones. Yes, of course. Oh, I'd love to have his autograph. Oh, uh, are you anybody? Uh, no, nobody much. <laughs> Will you tell Mrs. Martin we're here? Oh, yes, of course. Just make yourself right at home. I'll only be a minute. Mrs. Valentine, what are you going to tell Mrs. Martin? Just that Jimmy's been working too hard and that he can't appear here, that's all. There's nothing to it. Oh, those poor kids. Oh, now, Claire, you're making too much of this. You're as bad as Jimmy. It's ridiculous worrying about a bunch of kids. He's got to protect his career. But he means so much to them. Now, listen, Claire, he can't appear at the benefit, do you understand? Anyway, the kids are more interested in seeing his horse. That's not true. Well, Jimmy can send over some ice cream and cake. That'll get them. Just fill up their stomachs and they'll be happy. Mr. Valentine, how can you be so hard-boiled? I just face facts, that's all. Oh, I'm going to wait outside. Where? I prefer fresh air. Women. Hello? Oh, hello. What's your name? Where oh. do you live? Well, I... How old are you? Well, hey, now hold everything. Why the third degree, honey? What's the third degree? Do you always talk in questions? What did you say? <laughs> now, wait a minute. Look, we're not getting anywhere this way. My name is George. Never mind the rest. Now, come on. Tell me something about yourself. I've got a pet mouse. Uh-huh. Yeah? A white one with a long tail. Really? What's his name? George. George? <laughs> <laughs> what a coincidence. I just named him George. Oh, I see. Well, thank you, honey. That's, that's quite a compliment. Do you know any games? Games? Uh, well, now, let's see. Uh, I used to play some games with my nieces. Uh, what are nieces? Well, uh, nieces are, uh, well, they're, well, they're people. <laughs> I mean, uh, well, I'm their uncle, see? So that makes them my nieces. You get it? I don't have any uncle. Oh, well, that's tough, honey. But I have a brother. Well, wonderful. I always say there's nothing like a brother. Why, that's a million times better than an uncle. Jimmy Jones is my brother. Jimmy Jones? He told all us kids he'd be our big brother. So now we each have a family, don't we? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, look, honey, uh, how would you like another brother? Could you use two? Someone like, uh, well, like me. Oh, no. You wouldn't like me for a brother? No. I'm going to marry you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that settles. Do you want me to teach you a game? A game? Yeah, I'd love it. We could play horsey. Well, that sounds exciting, uh... What do I do? You get down on the floor on your hands and knees. Do I have to? Well, don't you want to play with me? <laughs> okay, honey, you would. Now what? Now I get on your back. There. Get me up, horsey. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on now. Hang on, honey. <laughs> Hard boiled, Mr. Valentine. Oh, Claire, uh, we're uh, playing horsey. <laughs> you make a beautiful horse. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 
Claire, this is the girl I'm going to marry. Oh, congratulations. Mr. Valentine, Mrs. Martin will see you now. She's in her office, if you'll just follow me. Okay, thanks. Bye, honey. Goodbye, George. See you in about 16 years. Don't forget now. Don't forget now. <laughs> you kid. <laughs> her office is on the other side of the play yard. Just wait. Oh, uh, miss, wait a minute. Look, uh, I won't bother Mrs. Martin. Uh, you give her a message for me, will you? All right. Just tell her that I personally guarantee that Jimmy Jones will be here for the benefit. And furthermore, he'll be on his horse, too. <laughs> Valentine, I have Mr. Jones on the phone for you now. Oh, thanks, Claire. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, George. What's on your mind? Now, listen, Jimmy, you can't let those kids down. Why, they believe in you. Why, they think you're their big brother. <laughs> Sounds as though you've been out to the orphanage, George. Well, now, look, you know me, Jimmy. I'm not sentimental or anything like that, but... Well, I can't have her disappointed. She named her mouse after me. Her what? Yeah. It's the first time I've ever had a mouse named after me. George, what are you talking about? Just this. You've got to ride Thunderbolt at the benefit. But, George, I told you, since the accident, every time I see a horse, I shake. What'll that do to the kids? Oh, gosh. You're right, Jimmy. No, we can't let him see you that way. Hey, wait a minute. In the movies, you use a double, don't you? What about him? Oh, I thought of him, but it won't work. He's built like me, but he doesn't look like me. The kids will get wise. Well, then all we have to do is to find a double that looks like you. It's a cinch, Jimmy. Leave it to me. <laughs> What an office force. What's the matter with you two? All you have to do is to find a man who looks like Jimmy Joe. Well, what was wrong with Red Prescott? His nose turns up and his hair is red. Well, then what about Stanley Burns? Why, he was born on a horse. Yeah, I could see that all right. One leg's bends south and the other bends north. <laughs> what about Mr. Manning? There's a similarity even if his face is a little long. I told you to find someone who looks like Jimmy, not his horse. Oh, well, it's no use, Mr. Valentine. I give up. But it's just a simple little job. Find a man about six feet tall with dark, wavy hair and blue eyes, a nose that's reasonably straight, not too much chin. Mr. A fellow... Valentine. What's the matter? Don't you realize who you're describing? Sure, Jimmy Jones. Someone else, too. Huh? You. Me? Hey, that's right. Mr. Valentine, you do look like him. I noticed it the first time I met you. Why, you could be brothers. Why, that's terrific. Claire, get Jimmy on the telephone right away. Tell him I found his double. <laughs> found the right person, George? <laughs> I know I found the right person. But is it someone we can trust? Trust? Why, this man is the soul of honor. And what's more, he's got plenty of courage. And a heart of gold. Pure gold. Hey, sounds tremendous. Well, I, I don't like to brag, Jimmy, but uh, if you were to pin me down, I'd say he is tremendous. Who is <laughs> Me. You? Sure. Remember how familiar we look to each other? I look like you. Oh, that's where I saw you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Well, that's wonderful, George. You don't know how relieved I am. Well, I told you I'd come through with flying colors, Jimmy. Now, be at my office tomorrow morning. Okay. Thanks a million, George. So long, Jimmy. Well, it's all set. See, there ought to be a good fee in this for me. Oh, I'm sure there will be, Mr. Valentine. Jeepers, Mr. Valentine, I can hardly wait for the benefit. I can just see you dashing into the arena on Thunderbolt. Yeah, it'll be a big moment, all right. The kids will be clapping and yelling their heads off, and I'll come dashing into the arena riding on... on... Great Caesar's ghost. Mr. Valentine, what is it? What's the matter? I just remembered. What's wrong? I've never been on a horse in my life. Well, it'll take George a minute or so to figure out what to do in this situation. Meanwhile, I wonder how many of you folks can be sure your cars are ready for winter. In many parts of the West, wherever winter means cold or rain... There will be an epidemic of car troubles this year. Most folks are driving the same old cars, you see, and they're bound to be a little less reliable simply because they're another year older. So here's a good tip. Drop in at your favorite Chevron gas station and let the Chevron dealer check over your car. He's an expert, and because he's in business for himself, making you a regular customer means a lot to him. So you can bet he'll give your car the best of care. You probably need winter-grade RPM motor oil... Or new windshield wiper blades, the battery may need recharging, or your tires could stand a retread job. Whatever it is, find out now before the weather gets really bad. Stop in at your neighborhood Chevron gas station this weekend.
Well, George had to find a double for Jimmy Jones, someone who looked like Jimmy and could ride Thunderbolt. It finally dawned on all of them that George himself resembles Jimmy, but then he suddenly remembered that he's never been on a horse in his life. Now it's a few minutes later. Oh, that's fine, Mr. Valentine. That's great. You offer to take his place and you've never even been on a horse. Well, there's nothing to it, Mr. Valentine. I'll teach you how to ride. Sonny, you, you've seen Thunderbolt, haven't you? Sure, lots of times. Is he very active? Oh, yeah, he's a very spirited animal. Oh, a spirited animal, that's what I thought. You're not getting cold feet. Oh, no, 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 of course not. But, but those kids will expect to see someone who can at least stay on the top side of the horse. You've got nothing to worry about, Mr. Valentine. I'll teach you how to ride. Sonny's really very good. Our grandfather raised horses in the country. My grandfather raised cane in the city. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Valentine, we better get started right away. Oh, now look, Sonny, I, I want to start nice and easy, understand? Oh, sure, just leave it to me. I'll have you riding like an old cow hand. Come on. Okay. Claire? Yes, Mr. Valentine. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Valentine. Shall I meet you somewhere for dinner? Yeah. Make it Joe's Hamburger Hut. That's the one place in town we can eat standing up. Yes, sir? Something in toys for the young man? Oh, no. Not for me. For him. For him? A toy for the gentleman? Yeah, he wants to... Sonny, not so loud. People are listening. Oh, I'll whisper it. Mr. Valentine wants a... He does? Yeah. Yeah, I just want him to get the feel of it. Oh, I see. Well, very well. Second aisle to the left. Tricycles, scooters, kitty cars, and hobby horses. <laughs> Okay on that hobby horse, Mr. Valentine. Now for your second lesson. Oh, but do you think I'm ready to ride this horse, Sonny? Oh, sure. Okay, then. Boost me up. Okay. There you go. Thanks. Now, put your feet in the stirrups, Mr. Valentine. Like this? Yeah, that's right. Press your knees in. Like this? Yeah, that's good. Now, hold on to the reins with your left hand. That's right. Oh, you look fine, Mr. Valentine. Okay, here we go. getting dizzy. Sonny, I can't see anything. Sonny, help. Stop this merry-go-round. <laughs> oh, he's a beautiful animal, isn't he, Mr. Valentine? Yeah, cute. Very cute. His name's Tornado. Oh, you. How do you do, Tornado? Oh. <laughs> Mr. Valentine, come on down out of the haymow. <laughs> he won't hurt you. Well, Sonny, I, I, I don't think he likes me. Oh, now, don't be silly, Mr. Valentine. Come on, get up on him. But do you think I'm ready for a real live horse? Well, the only way we can find out is to try. Come on. Say, he's up awfully high, isn't he? He's no higher than most horses. Well, couldn't I try one of the smaller models first? Like that one over there? Mr. Valentine, that's a Shetland pony. You don't want to ride him. <laughs> Why not? He has a very kind face. Come on, now. Get up on Tornado. All right. Nice Tornado. Stand still, boy. I said, stand still. Sonny, tell him to stand still. It's okay. Just jump up on him. Well, maybe he won't like it. He's used to it. Go ahead, Mr. Valentine. Put one foot in the stirrup and swing the other one over. All right. Here I go. Mr. Valentine, wait. I think I'll make it. But, Mr. Valentine... It's all right, Sonny. I'm... Sonny, what's happened to this horse? Where's his head? <laughs> Get down, Mr. Valentine. He put the wrong foot in the stirrup. Oh, is that it? I thought there was something wrong. Now, try it again. Remember, your left foot in the stirrup, your right foot swings over. Oh, it's no use, Sonny. You can't teach an old horse new tricks. He's not old. No, but I am. Come on, now, let's get back to the office. But, Mr. Valentine, what about the benefits? How will you be able to take Mr. Jones's place and ride Thunderbolt? Well, it's no use, Sonny. I can't do it. Jeepers, I wish I could ride Thunderbolt. Well, so do I. I'd like nothing better than to have... Sonny, why not? Huh? Of course. There's our answer. You'll ride Thunderbolt. <laughs> George, I don't get it. You do look like me, so why can't you take my place? 
Why don't you tell him, Mr. Valentine? Now, Claire, I'll handle this in my own way. Jeepers, Mr. Jones, please let me ride Thunderbolt. I can handle him honest. Just ask my sister. Will you keep quiet, Sonny? You see, Jimmy, I'm afraid that someone might catch on that I'm not you. Oh, do you think so? Well, I suppose there'll be reporters there. Yeah, I imagine so. And what if they find out? It'll ruin everything. Oh, please, Mr. Jones. I know Thunderbolt and I'll get along okay. Yes, Sonny's very good with horses. He's been riding since he was a baby. But how can we work it? Sonny certainly doesn't look like me. Well, Jimmy, I got this all figured out. Now, look, it's simple. You walk out and talk to the kids, uh -huh. you know, make a speech. Yeah. Then I imagine they'll begin yelling for Thunderbolt. Oh, you can count on that. Oh, fine, fine. Now then, when that happens, you say you brought Thunderbolt along, all right, but that you'd like to feel like a kid again and sit in the audience with them. Go on, then what happens? Well, then you say, uh, how about one of you kids riding Thunderbolt? Who'd like to try it? Uh-huh. Now then, Sonny is sitting right in the front row. You can't miss him. And when you say, who'd like to ride Thunderbolt, Sonny jumps up and yells, let me, mister, let me. Let me, mister, let me. Yeah, that's the idea. And, Jimmy, no matter how many kids yell, you choose Sonny. Understand? Oh, of course. I wouldn't dare take a chance on someone who didn't know horses. Now, how does it sound, Jimmy? It sounds okay, George, but you're sure nothing will go wrong? Listen to him. Now, Jimmy, I tell you, it can't miss. Why, what could possibly go wrong? see so many children in all your life, Mr. Valentine? It looks as if all the kids in town are here. All except Sonny. Now, stop worrying about Sonny. He'll show up. But he should be here now. What's happened to him? Well, I know he went to a movie early this afternoon. Then I think he planned to buy some riding boots. Riding boots? I can't save this place for him much longer. Why can't he be on time? Oh, just be patient, Mr. Valentine. But they're getting ready to start the show. Oh, where is that boy? Well, it's not like Sonny to be late. Well, it's your fault, Claire. You should have brought him over with you. That's right. Blame me for it. I always get... Oh, Mr. Valentine, they're going to begin. Here comes Jimmy Jones now. Howdy, kids! Oh, where's that sunny? Well, I can't imagine what's keeping him. Now, hold it, kids. Hold it. First, I want to tell you how much it means to me to be here again. You know, every year I look forward to my visit to the Brookdale Orphanage because it's just like coming home again for me. Where is he? Where's that sunny? Hey, what if he doesn't show up? <laughs> but I didn't come here to make a speech. I just wanted to say hello to all my friends, to all my little brothers and sisters. Mr. Valentine, you have to ride Thunderbolt. Oh, that's impossible. I don't even know on which side to get on. Now, is there anything I can do for you, kid? Thunderbolt! Mr. Valentine. Claire, think of something. You can't let one of them ride him. It would be dangerous. Well, it would be dangerous for me, too. Now, take it easy, kid. Take it easy. Take it easy. That's it. Thunderbolt is here, all right. But, look, I I'm sort of tired of riding I want to sit down there with the rest of you, with my friends. Here it comes. How about one of you riding Thunderbolt? Mr. Valentine. Who would like to ride? Mr. Valentine. Come on, who wants to ride Thunderbolt? Mister, mister, here's someone who wants to ride Thunderbolt. Go on, George, go Claire, on. Claire, Claire, stop pushing me. You've got to go now, George. There's no other way out. Oh, now, Claire. Come on, you've got to do it. What a spot you put me in, George. George. Hello, Jimmy. How do you feel? What's happened to Son? He just didn't show up. But, George, what are we going to do? The kids are waiting. Somebody's got to ride Thunderbolt. George will ride. Now, Claire. I guess you'll have to, George. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I'd like to. Really, I would. But I... Well, I just can't. Now, George. What do you mean? What are you talking about? What's the matter with you, George? Nothing. Except that I've never been on a horse in my life. Oh, I... You've never been on a horse in your life? That's right. Oh, this is a fine time to tell me. What about all these kids? They're waiting. Listen, Jimmy, I'd never be able to get up on them. But, George, them. And if I did get up on them, I'd never be able to stay there. But you said... And if you... I did stay there, I'd die of fright. Oh. <laughs> I ought to wring your neck. Now, that won't help any. But what am I going to do? Well, uh, uh, tell him you just noticed that Thunderbolt is indisposed. Yeah, tell him he has a headache. Who ever heard of a horse with a headache? <laughs> He's a very unusual animal. A very... But these kids believe in me. Well, they've been looking forward to this day for months. Then why don't you ride Thunderbolt? Me? Yes, you. All right, I will. Mr. Jones, you can't. I can't let these kids down. I'll ride him if it kills me. Mr. Valentine, stop him. Oh, Mr. Valentine, he's getting up on Thunderbolt. Mr. Valentine. Oh, I can't look. George. George, where are you? Out in the play yard, on the teeter-totter. Oh. Uh, why didn't you stay in the arena? Well, I... I just couldn't take it. But, George, it was all right. Jimmy was magnificent. What happened? He rode Thunderbolt just as though nothing had ever gone wrong. The kids went wild. Yeah, I heard them screaming, but I thought the worst. Jimmy's looking for you. He wants to talk to you. Oh, yeah, I'll bet he does. Come on, let's get out of here. 
But he's anxious to see you. Anxious to break my neck. Oh, now, George. Well, what else would he want to see me for? I was certainly a lot of help to him. Just when he needed me, I, I failed him. Now, George. I suppose you think I'm a coward. Oh, of course not. Oh, that's all right. Go ahead. Don't hold back. Tell me what you think. Well, I think... Please don't say it, Claire. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> this has been a very happy day for me, George. It's a pleasant change to see you this way. What way? I don't get it. Well, you're usually so sure of yourself. But now you're... Well, you're just like a little boy. <laughs> you mean, uh... You mean you'd like to take me in your arms? Well... Well, if you have any kind of an urge, Claire, don't suppress it. It isn't good for you. Oh, George, you're wonderful. Oh, say that again. Oh, George, you're wonderful. Say that again. Oh, George, you're wonderful. Say that again. Jimmy! <laughs> Why you talk about acting? Why, well, your acting makes mine look silly. Acting? Who's acting? <laughs> Why, do you know you really had me convinced that, that you were afraid to ride Thunderbolt? <laughs> and that's just what you wanted me to think, wasn't it, George? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I wanted you to think, all right. <laughs> sure, you had to trick me into riding Thunderbolt. Trick you? You know that once I got on him, I'd get my confidence back and I'd be cured. Oh, yes, of course. That's what I had in mind, all right. George. <laughs> well, it was wonderful psychology, George. I, I don't know how I can thank you. Oh, well, that's all right, Jimmy. Forget it. <laughs> Glad to help you out. George, are you trying to make me believe it was all an act? Oh, of course. What else? Why, I'm crazy about horses. There's nothing I like better than to ride on a really spirited merry-go-round. <laughs> I know that, George, but I couldn't let on, even to you, Claire. I was afraid you might give it away. Oh, see? Sure, I had to make the act look good, didn't I, Jimmy? <laughs> Why, of course. <laughs> Why, of course. Uh, will you excuse me now? Mrs. Martin wants to say. Oh, sure, Jimmy. Go right ahead. But uh, stick around. I have something to show you. So it was all an act, huh? Uh, naturally. Then you really like horses. Like them? Why, I love them. There's nothing I like better than a brisk canter down the bridle path. And to think that I bothered to feel sorry for you. Hey, Mr. Valentine, when does it start? When do I write Thunderbolt? Thunder? What happened to you? Where have you been? Well, I went to see Jimmy Jones and Thunderbolt in their new picture. But, Sonny, that was this morning. Yeah, I know, but it was so good I stayed to see it four times. <laughs> oh, Sonny. Never mind, Sonny. We didn't need you. We got along okay, didn't we, Claire? Hmm. Say, I'll bet I'll be able to get a good fee out of this. How much do you think I can stick him for? You ought to be ashamed to take anything. Oh, just listen to her. George. George. Oh, I'm glad you didn't leave. Come with me. I got a little present for you. A present? I was afraid you wouldn't accept any money from me, George. That would be just like him, wouldn't it, Claire? <laughs> <laughs> How well you know him. <laughs> so I decided to give you something else. Give me something uh, else? A little present. I think you'll like him, George. Like him? He's a full brother to Thunderbolt. A horse? <laughs> of course, he's a little wild yet, but think of the fun you'll have breaking him in. George will be back in a moment. Meanwhile, neighborliness, it always seems to me, is as American as hot dogs at a ball game. Most of us can spot it right away and appreciate it, too. It's one reason, I think, why many motorists like to drive into Chevron gas stations. They're all locally run, you know. And since they're home folks, Chevron dealers are mighty accommodating. Every time you stop at a cream, green, and burgundy station, you know you're trading with a chap who's in business for himself, anxious to please you because his success depends upon it. And there's another point worth remembering. Every Chevron gas station carries RPM-compounded motor oil, and climate-tailored Chevron Supreme Gasoline. They all honor Chevron credit cards, too. So just about everything a motorist looks for, he'll find at those neighborly Chevron gas stations. Try them when you're out for a drive this weekend. Well, next week, George finds himself in the middle of a lot of excitement. You'll probably hear him say something like this. Mr. Valentine. Yes? How are you feeling? Oh, fine. Great. Never felt better. Yeah? Well, enjoy your help while you got it. It won't last. That's all? Get out of town, Mr. Valentine. Mr. Valentine, what was that all about? What was it? The same fellow who's been phoning me right along. He's still worried about my health. Oh. 
seven gas stations all through the West invite you to be with us again next week for another chapter of Let George Do It, brought to you by the makers of Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Compounded Motor Oil. Let George Do It, starring Robert Bailey as George, with Francis Robinson as Claire, and Eddie Firestone Jr. as Sonny, is written by Pauline Hopkins, produced and directed by Owen Vincent. Others in the cast were Harry Bartell as Jimmy Jones, Nina Clowden as the girl, Anne Whitfield as the child, and Stanley Waxman as the floor walker. The music was composed and conducted by Charles Dant. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Broadcasting system. Welcome back. All right. This is really what um, I had in mind when I started the show. But I have to say, this was actually pretty good. Uh, it was funny and cute and, uh, you know, really, uh, I, you know, stands up as a nice uh, example of old-time radio comedy. Um, so uh, I was pleasantly surprised because I was expecting we, we would have episodes that were just exactly like the um, Cousin Jeff episode. This one, actually, there was some genuine uh, comedy in there. Uh, and you get to see a little bit of... Uh, the kind of the charisma that really made Bob Bailey such a great actor on the radio. Um, but I know uh, people are expecting hard-boiled detective stories from Let George Do It, and we're going to get to that um, very shortly because we're running out of these cutesy stories. That's it for today. We'll be back tomorrow with Sherlock Holmes as he takes a troop of, of London uh, elementary school children to the circus and hilarity ensues. Okay, all right, I'm making that up. All right, seriously, check out the show notes site, greatdetectives.net. Uh, got any comments, feel free to email me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. So please cast your vote for the show on Podcast Alley. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.